Hey guys, how are you? Welcome to the next interview coding question. Um, what I wanted to do today was to just talk about the differences between a string buffer and a string builder. It's basically an interview question that I was asked today and I wasn't too sure about exactly what to say. So I did some research and right now I'm going to give you guys this presentation. So here's the question. What is the differences? What, what is the difference between a string buffer and a string builder? Now, before I get to the differences, what I want to do is talk about some of the commonalities between the two objects, the string buffer and string builder. All right, so first of all, when it comes to a string buffer and a string builder, these are both classes that are used to make modifications to a string of characters. And I'm sure if you've been working with the Java programming language, um, there's been a time in which you've used either the string buffer or the string builder. It's basically used to just concatenate strings together. Another thing about string buffers and string builders is that they can be modified without leaving behind unused objects. Now, one example of this would be the code that I have here. So, let's just say, for example, we have a string. Okay, so inside of this string, we have the value of hello. So what we're, what we're doing on this next line, we're concatenating another string to this original string. We have the hello and I'm concatenating world to the end of this string. So basically what's happening here is that a string is an immutable object, which basically means that the state cannot change. And when you concatenate to the end of a string object, a new object is going to be created. Now, with this new object created, that can, that could possibly pose problems depending on the type of application that you're trying to construct. Because if you create a, a, a large number of objects, um, that can affect the performance of the application itself down the line, depending on what you're trying to do. Now, what I have down here is a string buffer. Um, the string buffer pretty much is similar to the string builder. They both are used to append... Um, strings together. So what I have here, I've created myself a string buffer object and I'm passing in the value hello. Once I pass in this value hello, I'm concatenating a string to this string buffer. So unlike the string that we were talking about earlier up here, this string buffer is going to append the content of this string to the existing string up here, and also a new object will not be created. Every string that is appended to the string builder is going to be stored, that is, that is stored within this string buffer is going to be stored actually in the string buffer. A new object will not be created, unlike the, the, the immutable string that we have up here. And the reason for that is because string buffers as well as string builders are mutable, meaning that their state can change. Okay. Now, what I want to do is talk about some of the key differences between a string buffer and a string builder. All right. So, okay. So first of all, a string buffer. If anyone in the interview asks you a question, that's and, and, and the question is, what is the difference between a string buffer and a string builder? Then your answer should be, string buffers are synchronized, whereas string builders are non-synchronized. That's the answer that you should give. All right, so. As I said before, a string buffer is synchronized. So that means that the um, string buffer um, object is thread safe, which basically means that um, it can be accessed safely by multiple threads. So that basically means that this string buffer object contains synchronized message. Yeah, synchronized methods um, to control the access so that only one thread can access the string buffers objects synchronize code at a time. So basically within this string buffer class, there are methods, well actually the append method, for example, is synchronized. So that means that it is thread safe. 
Another thing about string buffers is that they are slower than string builders. So, but, so what I mean by that is that if you were to just create yourself a string buffer object and you were to concatenate something to the string buffer object, it would take more time to append that to a string buffer than it would a string builder. And the reason for that is because string buffers are synchronized. Now, what I want to do is talk about string builders. String builders are pretty much the opposite of string buffers. I mean, they do the same thing. You can still append string one string to another string um, using the string builder, but they're pretty much opposites. All right, so the first thing is that string builders are non-synchronized, which pretty much means that they do not contain any synchronized message. Um, any synchronized me methods, um, basically meaning that they are not thread safe. So if multiple threads were to access a string builder, then basically it, it just wouldn't be thread safe. So um, it's not ideal when you're working with multi-threaded type applications. But another thing about string builder is that they are faster than string buffers. So if you were to append an element to a string builder and append an element to a string buffer, you will realize that the time that it takes to append an element to a string builder is faster than that of a string buffer. All right. Yeah, what I wanted to do here is pretty much just talk about threads safety. I'm not going to go into too much detail about it, but just wanted to explain what it is. So basically, um, Thread safety is basically when you're writing code or a piece of code that has the ability to guarantee safe execution by multiple threads at the same time. Um, so basically, if you have a piece of code and multiple threads are going to be accessing this code, your code has to be able to handle that with the synchronized keyword in the header or um, some other type of synchronization that you would need to use in order to incorporate that thread safety. As I said, I'm not going to go into it too much because I just want to focus on string builders and string buffers. But if you do have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. All right. Now, what I want to do now is just write some code to show you guys exactly how string builders and string buffers work. All right, so I have my Java application right here. Now, the first thing I want to do is create myself a string builder and a string buffer object. String builder equals new string builder. And then I'm going to create myself a string buffer. buff equals new string buffer. All right, when it comes to do to do, to these two types of data structures, um, as I said before, the string builder is non-synchronized. So none of the so none of the methods within the string builder are synchronized, which basically means it's not thread safe. But when it comes to a string buffer, this data structure is synchronized, which means that it is thread safe. And this is not safe, not thread safe. All right, so I actually want to show you that now. So basically, if you were to go into the string builder class here, just hold down control and click, you'll realize that none of the methods in here are synchronized, which basically means that it's not thread safe. And also, when you're dealing with the string builder, um, the method that you use is, or oh, that you're most likely to see would be the append method, which is right here. And as you notice, there's no synchronized keyword 
within this particular method for string builder. So, um, as I said before, this is not thread safe, but it does append elements to the string faster. It appends strings together faster than that of a string buffer. Now, if I go into my string buffer, and as I said before, string buffers are synchronized, meaning that they're thread safe. I control and I click here. You'll realize that there are some methods in here that are synchronized. See, you can see it already. Synchronized here, synchronized. And this pretty much just allows the application to be thread safe. Or the, this pretty much allows these methods within the string bu buffer to be thread safe. If I go to append, we have a synchronized keyword here, which basic, basically, as I said before, if this method is going to be accessed by multiple threads, it'll be able to handle that because it is synchronized. You can just see the difference here: the append method within the string builder, as well as the string, as well as the append method in the string buffer. How they're different. All right. So what I want to do now is to just show you how the time that it takes to append a string in a string buffer differs in the time that it takes to append a string in a string builder. In the string, yeah, buffer. Builder, buffer. All right. So the first thing I want to do is this. In order to find how much time it takes for a piece of code to execute, we first of all need to create a start time and an end time. So we're going to go long start time, and then we want to set this equal to system dot current time in milliseconds. And then right below here, we're going to have a end time long in time we're going to set that equal to system dot current time in milliseconds and what we want to write here is the code that we're trying to test the time on all right so you know what before we even write the code I'm just going to write me long duration which is pretty much going to return the number of milliseconds that it takes to execute a specific piece of code. Long duration, I set that equal to end time minus start time, and then I'm simply just going to print it out. Duration. All right. So, what I want to do in this code section would be to write a for loop. For int i equals zero, i is lesser than we're gonna say a million. I'm gonna loop a million times. Semicolon i plus plus. All right, and what we want to do is just simply append sb dot append dot append. Also remember that this is a string builder that we're using, so this should execute in a quicker time, in, in a quick time. All right, so I'm just gonna type hello. All right, so basically what's happening here is that the hello string is going to be appended to the string builder a million times. Okay, so this is for the string builder. Okay. Now I want to do the same thing for the string buffer, which is going to look something like this. You know what, let me save some of the space here. All right. I want to do the same thing for the string buffer. So I want to go long start time. I'm going to name this two equals system dot current time in milliseconds. Then we're going to do this again long in time two equals as well as system dot current time in milliseconds then I'm gonna have me a section for the code for loop for 
int j equals 0, j is lesser than 1 million, and j plus plus. And I'm simply going to append the same thing, sb uff dot append hello a million times. Okay. I have a million here and I have a million here. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, four. All right. All right. So I save the application. And so pretty much what I'm doing here, I just want to test the time that it takes to append a string to the string builder and I also want to check how much time it takes to append the string to a string buffer. Just trying to compare the different times. And also I want to do a sys out down here. And I'm going to go end time two minus start time two. Control S. Save that. Now I'm going to run this now. All right, so the first time we should get is for the builder. Next time would be for the buffer. So we run this. So as you can see here, we have a time of 93 milliseconds, which means that the string buffer takes more time than the string builder. And as I, as I said before, the string builder it takes less time. So it's way faster to add or concatenate strings using the string builder. And when it comes to a string buffer, since it is synchronized, um, it's going to take a little bit more time to concatenate hello to the string buffer a million times. All right. So that's pretty much it. Um, Basically, if you guys have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. Don't forget to like the video if you felt like you've learned something here. Um, subscribe, and thanks for watching.